Uh, well, we have some special programming today on the channel. Um, I am being joined by nobody, <laughs> except for this wonderful book, One Simple Idea by Mitch Horowitz. The uh, lights coming in through blinds gives it a really nice effect when we look at it that way. This is actually a library copy that I have here. Um, this is day one of a pop-up course that I'm teaching, uh, exploring some of the main ideas and drawbacks that we often talk about on this channel when it comes to a lot of this manifesting advice that's popular, especially uh, you could say kind of mainstream law of attraction and law of assumption type of advice. As we often have discussed, and if you're new here, if you look around and watch some of the videos we've done on Neville Goddard or various law of attraction teachings or spiritual bypassing, this will become clear quickly. As we often discuss here, these are really wonderful ideas. Manifesting ideas, law of attraction, law of assumption, whatever you want to call them. In my book, they're, they're all pointing at the same thing. These are wonderful ideas that I believe in. But I believe in them in a pragmatic, rather down-to-earth way, in the sense where I've seen them positively affect my life and those of others. And I don't necessarily believe in a lot of the ideas I hear when it comes to these wonderful teachings in this overly esoteric or, you know, theoretical way that is so popularly talked about online. The problem with this uh, theoretical discussion is that often the pragmatic value of these various manifesting teachings is lost when it becomes theoretical. It also tends in this online space, whether it's YouTube or Reddit or TikTok or Instagram or wherever, to often um, lend itself to a ton of confusion, a ton of spiritual, mar uh, spiritual marketing, and a ton of spiritual bypassing. As someone who's been interested in uh, these concepts for about 10 years, uh, specifically interested um, in exploring some of Neville's advice in a very practical way for 10 years and has been trying to talk to people about it for that long. It's been very disconcerting for me to see the amount of marketing and plain old manipulation that often occurs uh, on social media when it comes to his advice and many other great law of attraction teachers advice. What's interesting and perplexing and a reason that we're doing this pop-up course is that more people, that most people don't seem to be aware of the degree of marketing and spiritual bypassing that's happening here. The degree of bullshit that we see each day when it comes to these ideas being talked about. Because as I said, there's tremendous value in them. However, there's also like any teaching potential flaws, drawbacks, errors, and inaccuracies that really should be uh, examined, especially given the degree of marketing bullshit and horseshit that people are selling you when it comes to these various law of assumption and law of attraction ideas. In other words, we sometimes need to turn a critical eye and use common sense when it comes to talking about these ideas. And it amazes me more people don't do it. And it's one reason that I like to talk about it and that this pop-up course is occurring right now. Um, a few weeks ago, you know, or maybe it was longer than that now, I was on Spencer Hughes' podcast. And uh, I'll put a link above to that, uh, a podcast excerpt that I have with Spencer. You know, and he asked about, you know, Spencer, like myself, has been to Neville for a while. And he said, why is Neville so big now? You know, and like, why, why has the law of attraction, this phenomenon caught on so much seemingly, um, you know, recently? Not to say the law of attraction 
hasn't always been popular, but it seems like social media, the pandemic, all these things have made it even more popular. And um, I said that a lot of it's just marketing, as I just mentioned. But I also said, you know, what's interesting is, is people just don't know the history of this stuff. And there's very little history written about um, kind of like, you know, the involvement of law of attraction, new thought ideas in the context of American history. But, you know, I was telling Spencer, and I've, I've said this other places before, a big exception is the writings of Mitch Horowitz specifically Mitch's book, One Simple Idea. I'll hold it up again because of the awesome light that we have going on. Um, One Simple Idea by Mitch Horowitz. After you know mentioning it to Spencer, I, I, I took it out from the library. I didn't have a, a copy anymore of my own. And I started reading it again. And um, I have to say, there's no such thing as like a book you have to read when it comes to this stuff, right? We all are different. We all have our own subjective uh, you know, writings and teachers we like. But if you want any type of history of, you know, law of attraction, new thought in the context of, of American history, or basically just a history of positive thinking in a very readable form in, you know, American culture, you really should read one simple idea. You really should read it. You know, so I emailed Mitch and I said, you know, I'm rereading your book and it's just freaking ter terrific. You know, I said, it's just, I said that what I just told you, I said, everybody should read this book who's interested in these ideas, especially Neville, because Mitch is one of the few people who was really championing, championing Neville, like, you know, 10 or more years ago. He was one of the few people uh, talking about Neville. There just weren't many people talking about Neville. And he was talking about a lot of these other great positive thinking teachers as well. And turning, you know, a critical lie onto a lot of their work but doing it, you know, intelligently and as a believer in the effectiveness of a lot of these various teachers. Um, and anyway, I said, you know, Mitch, you want to come on and talk about the book? He said, I'm, you know, thank you so much for the kind words. I'm super busy, but, you know, have at it. I, I can't come on right now, but you can go crazy talking about the book, quoting from it, et cetera. So I'm going to try to do Mitch a little bit of justice and quote from it some, read from it some, and, um, just explore some of the ideas he talks about in the book. If you're into these ideas, guys, if you're on YouTube watching videos about this stuff, you, you, you should read one simple idea instead of watching videos. <laughs> Probably some of the, take some of your video watching time off and, and read or listen to one simple idea. I'm sure there's an audiobook version as well. So, I, you know, I'm not going to read the whole book to you by any means but i i think the last chapter of the book called does it work is really um an amazing chapter because it sums up so many of the of the common sense questions that should be asked when it comes to these law of attraction law of assumption teachings yet usually are not asked in this space or talked about now, why aren't they talked about? There's a multitude of reasons probably, but uh, again, a few of the big ones are marketing where people are trying to sell you something and don't really care about critically examining it honestly to tell you like the potential, not only pros, but cons of utilizing the information. Or there's just a lot of spiritual bypassing going on where people are like delusional about what they think is gonna happen by applying the advice. Mitch, explores this very well in the last last chapter of One Simple Idea, the chapter called Does It Work? So I'm going to read primarily, I think, for this pop-up course, and this might be just a couple videos or it might be many videos. I'm going to read primarily from just the last chapter. I think it's the last chapter. Does It Work is the name of the chapter again. But uh, before I do that, I'm actually going to read an excerpt today from the end of the previous chapter, which is called The Spirit of Success. Um, there's a teacher that I, I want to look at again, because I've, I've just, you know, I remember there's a lot of stuff on YouTube, actually, of him speaking, Vernon Howard. Mitch really raves about him in this book. So I'm going to be revisiting Vernon Howard some. Um, he's talking about Vernon Howard at the end of, of uh, 
the chapter leading up to the does it work chapter. Um, and I just want to read you this, this last portion of the chapter. Vernon Howard asked, will you trust a religion or philosophy that does not produce a truly poised and decent human being? Howard's question is one to which every spiritual system must ultimately submit. It has a special poignancy for new thought and positive thinking. Since positive thinking promises achievable practical results, it cannot sidestep the demand. Prove it. This returns us to William James's philosophy of pragmatism. The only viable measure of a private belief system, James believed, is its effect on conduct. And that, finally, is one of the most is the one meaningful assessment of the legacy and efficacy of positive thinking. If it works, it doesn't matter much what its detractors say. If, and if it doesn't, then the philosophy has no claim on sensitive people. Like the misguided instrumentalities of heroic medicine, it belongs in books of social history and museum cases, but not in the folds of daily life. Most contemporary critics begin from the following perspective. Well, of course, positive thinking doesn't work. To suggest otherwise is akin to believing in unicorns. Granted, they say, a determinedly positive outlook might make you a nicer carpooler, but it has nothing to do with negotiating the real demands of life. And in many regards, it blinds you to them. Pragmatism, however, requires judging a personal system of conduct, not by whether it squares with the general conception of what ought to work, but by whether it does work. Empiricism, in James's view, means measuring an idea without reference to how it stands or falls in comparison to widely held reasoning, but by what an individual can perceive of its nature, its consistency, and its effects. Pragmatism requires inspecting an ethical or religious idea by the experience of its use, including within oneself. We will now submit positive thing to that test. So that leads us up into the, the chapter that I'm going to be reading from in this pop-up course, Does It Work? And it gives us a good summation of what we're going to be looking at. Horowitz, Mitch, like, like myself, knows that these ideas work. I'm not someone who says, oh, the law of attraction doesn't work. The law of assumption doesn't work. Far from it. I believe in this stuff. I know this stuff works, at least to some degree. However, just because it definitely works, in my opinion, to some degree, like definitely, and I think most of you watching this know it definitely works to some degree, doesn't, believe, doesn't mean that we should uh, believe everything that certain teachers we like say about these ideas. For instance, Neville or Abraham Hicks or whoever. Just because a lot of these new thought ideas make sense to us intuitively, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, in a way that we, we, we feel like we know it's true, even if there are, even if the majority of people think it's gobbledygook and just ridiculous, even if we feel that way, that doesn't mean we just have to buy in or be gullible to all the ideas espoused by these teachers. We have to use you know, our critical thinking faculties to better understand and utilize this stuff in a helpful way for ourselves and for others, right? That just makes sense, does it not? I think that's really important. So that's what we're gonna be looking at in this pop-up course. And you know, it, it should hopefully be very straightforward. But even though it's straightforward, and even though you've probably already thought about this stuff before, we need to remind ourselves, at least most of us do, I think, when it comes to these ideas that Mitch is going to point out. I mean, I know I really loved the reminder when I, you know, reread this book a, a couple of weeks ago. We need to hear this stuff over and over again, because it's so rarely said. What's usually said is this bullshit of, oh, just get it to work for you, just persist, just live in the end, da 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 But it doesn't work in that way effectively for most people who actually try it and try to utilize it long-term sustainably. It's not that simple. Positive thinking, you could say the law of attraction, the law of assumption is, is, is a simple idea. It's one simple idea, right? But utilizing it in our life cannot be simplistic. 
at least most of the time, because a simplistic application of this stuff will not be effective or ultimately rewarding for most of us. So this is very important. Um, I'm going to read a little bit from the beginning of the chapter, and then we'll we'll take a break and read more next next video. Um, so this is the beginning of this chapter, and again, I'm skipping parts and stuff. So this is just a general overview. If you, the book is worth reading or listening to in its entirety. Okay, but this is a a course where we're covering stuff relatively quickly. So Mitch writes from the earliest experiments of Phineas Quimby up through the popularity of the Secret. The movements of mind power metaphysics have sought to explain evil, suffering, and illness as an illusion, as the result of an individual's inability to understand and experience the ultimate reality of the universe, a beneficent creative intelligence whose divine inflow permeates all of life. Evil is said to appear like darkness in a room once the light is blocked out. When life is viewed from this perspective, a person visits hardship, disease, or, ca or catastrophe upon himself through wrong thoughts and flawed self-conception. Sensitive people rightly object. How could such a notion possibly account for the victims of mass murder, infant mortality, and natural disaster? And on an intimate level, what mature person has not witnessed a life extinguished, even in surroundings of hope and love? No movement can aspire to moral seriousness without convincingly resolving such questions. This brings us finally to the positive thinking movement's most serious and lingering dilemma. What are the ethics and moral credibility of a movement that considers the outer world nothing more than a reflection of an individual's private outlook? So that's what we're talking about here, okay? This is like the obvious stuff the real questions, the hard-hitting questions, you could say, that people online don't want to actually look at. This is what it's about, folks. We have to ask these questions. We have to put this to the test. I'm going to read these last two paragraphs again because they're so important. When life is viewed from this perspective, a person visits hardship, disease, or catastrophe upon himself through wrong thoughts and flawed self-conception. Sensitive people rightly object. How could such a notion possibly account for the victims of mass murder, infant mortality, and natural disaster? And on an intimate level, what mature person has not witnessed a life extinguished, even in surroundings of hope and love? No movement can aspire to moral seriousness without convincingly resolving such questions. This brings us finally to the positive thinking movement's most serious and lingering dilemma. What are the ethics and moral credibility of a movement that considers the outer world nothing more than a reflection of an individual's private outlook? I hope you're beginning to see that we just can't blindly believe people that say that your whole outer world is created by your thinking. You can think that, you can believe that, but then you have to look at life this way. And do you really want to do that? I often say that, you know, there's, there's, in my view, it seems like a lot of the time, a big difference between the practical element of changing your internal world to change your external world of these law of attraction type of teachings and the more mystical spiritual teachings um, that really seem to touch at the heart of uh, you know moral seriousness and, and convincingly resolving you uh, resolving like how to live your life on like a deep spiritual level there's more value for me in the practical aspect of the law of attraction and not looking at it in this, you know, my thoughts create everything way that is popularized. Mitch is going to cover that a, a bit in the next section that we're going to read from, and we'll read from that next time. But, you know, until then, really consider uh, what mature person has not witnessed a life extinguished, even surrounding hope and love and what are the ethics and moral credibility of a movement that considers the outer world nothing more than a reflection of an individual's private outlook? Like, if you take all of this stuff seriously, 
and that view your life that way? Is that actually how you want to be viewing your life? So yeah, this is a good place to stop for today. Welcome to the pop, of course. Uh, again, uh, read or listen to One Simple Idea if you have not, or read or listen to it again. And if you have any questions or uh, would like coaching, I can be reached at info at radicalcounselor.com. Until next time.